Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we're ready for the event. WNYW TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Catch and release back then. You took it home and uh, you ate it. Yeah, can you hear us? Hi, good morning. Stand by, stand by, please. You can actually see the whales. That's cool. Now, you don't want to fish them. Yeah, no, no. no. Hi, good morning. All right, are we ready to go to outer space? We All right. are. The Good astronauts morning. on the International Space Station Hi there. join us right now. We have crew members Dan Burbank and Don Pettit, astronauts both. Gentlemen, welcome to Good Day New York. Can you hear us? Greg, we've got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Okay, listen, what's it like up there for you guys now, especially, you know, you're hanging out with the cosmonauts these days? Well, we've been doing that, actually that for quite a long time. It's the International Space Station uh, for good reason. We've got uh, 50 nations all around the world that helped build this and, uh, and continue to operate it today. So we've got currently a crew of uh, three Russian cosmonauts, and uh, we've got Andre Kuypers uh, from the Netherlands and uh, Don Pettit myself from, uh, from the U.S. And from a crew perspective, there's only one space station. Well, that's beautiful. Uh, it really is, and we're uh, we're proud of you. And uh, how long have you been up there, by the way? Uh, let's uh, start with uh, uh, the scientist, uh, Don Pettit. Uh, you know, I can't actually remember how long I've been up here. I I left home in uh, the middle of October to go to Star City, Russia, and uh, I haven't been back since. What kind of experiments have you been conducting up there? Well, uh, we, we have two general classes of experiments. We have life science experiments where we're the guinea pigs mostly and we poke and snip at ourselves to try to look at secrets to human physiology using gravity as another experimental variable. And then we do physical science experiments, combustion experiments, crystal growth experiments, things like that. And this morning, I have, in fact, actually, up until about two minutes before this PAO event, uh, I was working with some folks at NASA Glenn on combustion experiments where we're burning solid materials. I was burning a, a sphere of, of PMMA, not to be confused with our PMM, which is a module, but PMMA, it's polymethyl methacrylate, uh, burning a little sphere of that stuff, it's plastic, and looking at its characteristics uh, in a weightless environment with forced convection. And it's fascinating. We saw some soot deposition along the, the uh, terminator of the sphere that hasn't been seen before on, uh, on Earth-based combustion experiments. It's really exciting stuff. That sounds so cool. Dan, I want to know from you what you do in the off time, because I know you have that astronaut musical band. What's it called? Max Q? Are you singing up in space? Yeah, that... Um, actually, Rosanna, I haven't, I don't, haven't had as much time as I'd like uh, uh, to play the guitar. We have a guitar up here. We've got a, an electronic keyboard. And uh, occasionally on the weekends, there'll be a little bit of time, and I'll break the guitar out and, uh, and play. Got to keep my, uh, my chops up enough so that I can uh, rejoin the band when I come back uh, late in April. Dan, let me ask you this. Where are you right now? Where is the International Space Station relative to Earth? What are you over, and how fast are you moving? Well, Greg, we're moving about 17,500 miles an hour. When we started this discussion, we were over the Midwest. By the time we finish in a couple of minutes, we'll be uh, crossing Cape Hatteras, uh, headed out over the Atlantic and then the South Atlantic. I wonder, do you guys ever get nauseous while you're up there? Does it ever get old, just floating around? Well, to answer the first question, um, I, I think for the most part, all of us have been pretty fortunate. There's probably about a 40 percent or so incidence uh, where there'll be a little bit of what we call space motion sickness for uh, for some folks when they first launch. It generally goes away in a couple of days. It's uh, it's very transient, and uh, when uh, when folks uh, feel a little bit off, it'll uh, generally pass pretty quickly. And like I say, after about a week or so, um, just about everybody I think uh, feels uh, full up. All of us uh, had a had a pretty easy go of it. As far as far as do you ever get tired of it, I, I can say at least after, uh, well after four months now, you don't even get close to getting tired of being weightless up here. It's one of the neatest aspects of being in space. 
and if we had the technology right now, I would immigrate to space. I'd load my, my family up, my boys up on a rocket and immigrate to space and never come back to Earth. But of course, uh, that's a safe thing for me to say because we don't have the technology to do that. <laughs> uh, listen, I've always been curious where you actually sleep and that kind of thing. I mean, it doesn't look very comfortable where you are. There are a lot of wires and things hanging around that look like might get in the way. Uh, how much space do you have up there? And, and, and is there a rec room or anything like that? No. No rec room, no holodeck, uh, nothing like that. For our sleeping quarters, we each have about a phone booth size volume to sleep in. And actually, it sounds like it's uh, it's pretty uh, cramped and cozy, but it's more than enough. And and uh, we have uh, each of us have a sleeping bag essentially that can be suspended from the ceiling and the floor. And uh, sometimes, at least in my case, I will just sleep floating around inside the volume, and uh, and it and it's fine. It's like sleeping in the softest softest bed you can imagine. Could could you uh, maybe yeah let go of the microphone? Could we see a because could we see a weightless demonstration? Something mild, something small. Uh, we'd love to. Uh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Can we look out the window? There he goes, flying oh, around. No! Ah, come that, back. That looks like so much fun. Hey, how's the Actually, food? Actually, yeah. Actually, the food's pretty good. We have a great selection of food, and there's a lot of food up here that you would think would not necessarily be uh, be all that well suited uh, for rehydrating, for example. And it actually uh, actually does really well. Some of the food comes uh, thermally stabilized and pouches, and uh, and it's a very similar to what uh, some of our troops might uh, might have to eat, um, what we call meals ready to eat, um, you know, over in the Gulf. Um, a lot of the food, though, is uh, is dehydrated. We do that because uh, we can save a lot on launch weight by launching food dry and adding the water when we get here. The folks that plan and, and figure out how to do that do a really good job. So when you add a little bit of water in the dispenser unit that's right above our heads right here, in a matter of about 10 or 15 minutes, you can have anything from shrimp cocktail to, scream, to cream spinach to steak, and, uh, and it's all really great. It looks like a lot of fun. I can see why Don wants to emigrate to space permanently. Finally, do you get to watch movies? Do you get to watch TV shows, email? What do you do with the, with the, with the downtime that you have to have from time to time? You're up there for months at, uh, on end. You have to relax every now and then. What do you do? Well, we have this saying called the cupola, and it's a series of seven windows that look out on Earth. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no need to have TV and movies and things like that when you can go look at this view, which is an incredible feast for your eyes. And then, of course, we're in this weightless environment, and there's all kinds of fascinating little side experiments you can do on your off-duty time, uh, investigating things that just don't work this way when you are on the surface of Earth. And, and I think this is part of being in a frontier where we're living in an environment that's unknown and uh, it's counter to our intuition and the answers are not in the back of the book. And we're in the process of writing the book. Don Pettit, Dan Burbank, thanks so much. Safe travels. Real quick, can we look out the window with you? Probably not. It looks like that camera's uh, kind of fixed in one position. We got about 20 windows scattered all about the space station, and there's one directly below you right now. But unfortunately, for us to open it up and, and give you a view, I don't think you have the time to do that. But uh, it was great talking with you today, and we wish you all the very best. We just got a peek uh, from another camera. Thank you so much. Uh, again, be careful up there, and uh, we look forward to you coming home. Okay, thank you. All the best. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, WNYW-TV. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.